there, I'm Parveen and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is actually the first video I'm filming for this platform, or really any platform at all. I hope to be posting once a week every Sunday, so if you enjoyed today's content, I hope you'll consider sticking around and subscribing. For my first video, I thought I would share a pretty large aspect of my life, which is what I do for a living. I am a data scientist for a regional transportation authority here in Metro Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada that is, for those of you that might be less familiar. I am also an instructor in data analytics with BrainStation, which is a technology school where I help other professionals gain the skill sets to sort of move into the realm of data analytics. So you could say a large majority of my day is spent in the realm of data science. It's definitely not my only passion and I hope to share other aspects of my life on this channel from my coffee enthusiasm to my planner or organization addiction. But for day today, I thought I would really dive into the question that I get asked most when I talk about what it is that I do for a living. Which is usually, what is that? To explain what data science is, I thought I would sort of split it into two parts. I'm going to start off with a fairly high level overview and then dive into what is it that a data scientist might actually do when presented with a problem. Alright, jumping into that high level overview of what data science is. I think why this is such a tricky question to answer is because data science is still a relatively new field. Though I think the platforms and the tools that are being used aren't necessarily new, they've definitely been out there, the definition of what data science is and what a data scientist does on the day-to-day -day is definitely going to shift depending on who you ask and what background they're coming to the question from. In my mind, data science is sort of the crossroads between a couple different disciplines, and those disciplines being computer science, statistics, and then communication or visualization. And it's really between the crossroads of these or the combination of these three what is where data science lives and what defines what a data scientist does. So now that you have this sort of general picture forming in your mind, you're probably imagining some statistics or some math, some type of computer or coding, and then finally some type of visual communication. I wanted to dive into how a data scientist might actually tackle a problem and how they might actually do their work on the day to day. To actually describe what it is that I do or what a data scientist might do to solve a problem, granted this is from my perspective, so if you are a data scientist out there you might be doing things a little bit differently, but in my mind whenever presented with a project or a problem I sort of go through five stages or five steps to sort of solve that. And those five steps are really first starting off with asking the right questions, second moving into exploration. Third, moving into analysis, probably a little bit of the bulk of the work that you might be imagining that a data scientist does. Not necessarily the bulk of the work, but that's probably what you're imagining. And then fourth, moving into either productionizing that work or providing recommendations. And finally, communication. When I talk about questions, this is really the way that a data scientist thinks. So whenever someone asks a very vague question, a data scientist is really skilled at thinking about what types of information might be available, what type of questions need to be narrowed down at the beginning of a project to really understand what is possible and where they're going to be going with the project. These questions might be questions you're asking yourself or you're asking your manager or team, um, really clarifying the scope of the problem. And this sounds like it might be a super easy step, it's just a chat, but it's, it's really the crux of the entire work that you're going to be doing. If you ask the right questions at the beginning, you're going to be having a really different result at the end. The next step is exploration. Exploration might look a little bit different depending on how familiar you are with the data. As enticing as it might be once you get that project and you get those questions, it's really important to take the time and explore what information you have. You're going to be looking at all of the assumptions that you're going to have to take into consideration. This exploration phase might depend on the platform that you're using. At least for myself, I primarily work in SQL and R for my sort of exploration and analysis stages. So I'm going to be looking at uh, what all of the variables mean, what are the assumptions, what are the ranges, really getting your hands wet in the information. Once you've got a pretty good grasp of the information that's available to you, you're going to be moving into the analysis stage. 
And of course, this is going to look different for what type of problem you're actually trying to solve. Uh, I do a lot of my analysis in R. You might be working in Python. I think those are the two major platforms that a lot of data scientists use, but this is really where you're going to be solving or coding the problem. Then you're going to be moving into the recommendations or sort of productionizing phase. Depending on if this is sort of a one-off analysis or if this is something that you want to be hopefully reproducible, because whenever you do something right the first time, everyone's going to be asking you to do it a million and one slightly different ways. So taking the time to productionize something is very important. Now you've sort of done the analysis and you're coming to these final conclusions or thoughts. And then finally, communication. This is arguably the most important step because if you're creating something or analyzing something, but then you're unable to communicate it to anyone else, did you really do anything that was useful? Communication or how you're going to communicate your final analysis is definitely something you want to clarify right at the beginning in the question phases. Is the person asking you a question so that you can actually create some predictive type of result? Is their answer easily created by creating a simple bar chart? All of these things you really want to know at the beginning before you dive into this sort of five step process. But whatever your deliverable might be at the end, you are going to be communicating that out in the best platform. I generally, because I work in an area that isn't necessarily technical, technical as in you might imagine that other data scientists work, I work with a lot of planners and managers and a lot, a lot of the time I'm communicating up. So a lot of my communication is going to come in the form of memos. This might also look like a visualization. So really summarizing that analysis in a simplistic way for the audience at hand. So the communication definitely considers, uh, is going to look different, I mean, for depending on which audience you are speaking to. So these are the sort of five steps that I go through as a data scientist. You might be thinking this analysis process sounds really similar to what a data analyst might do. And it definitely might. I think that because data science is such a relatively new field, whenever you're looking at like job descriptions or even asking different data scientists and different companies what it is that you do, you might see a range of sort of specialties ranging from data analyst to somewhere where data science lives in the center and then data engineer. I think what's unique about being a data scientist is being able to fluidly move through these different realms. Though you might not be setting up the databases, setting up these relationships, putting in these um, keys and tables and creating the actual structure of the databases, you need to be fairly fluent in communicating and interacting with these databases. Not only so you can work hand in hand with the people who are doing that work, the data engineers, but so that you can manipulate large amounts of data. And then on the other side of the spectrum, the data analyst who is answering sort of those one-off questions and really looking at what or describing what the data in front of them actually says. I think I'll get a lot of these types of data requests and that's definitely a huge part of my work. What sort of separates an analyst from a data scientist is one, being able to interact with large amounts of data and being able to that, do that manipulation on their own. And then secondarily, being able to move from just what the data is saying today in sort of a descriptive sense, but moving into the predictive sense, which is where your um, you know, time series analysis, your machine learning, that's where that is going to sort of move. That being said, I think as a data scientist, a key, a key skill set is really going to be able, the ability to be moving between these three different competencies and sort of lying somewhere in between. Ultimately, I think a data scientist is first and foremost a scientist. It just happens to be a little bit of a unique science exploration in that the samples are not sediment samples or petri dishes. The subject matter is now really data and information structures. But I think data scientists are really bringing the same types of passions to the table that you might be able to imagine of any scientist. There's really an innate curiosity and innovation that comes with being a data scientist. Hopefully you found my description of data science and what a data scientist does illuminating. If you are a data scientist yourself and you feel like I have left something out, or if you have questions that you feel like I didn't touch on, I hope you'll consider leaving some comments, feedback, or questions down below. And I'll talk to you next week.